My name is Julie Wood and I'm a senior scientist at Charles River Watershed Association headquartered in Weston, Massachusetts. Although our office is in Weston, Massachusetts, the association's area of concern and focus is the entire 308 square miles of the Charles River watershed. Within this 308 square mile watershed, we encompass 35 Massachusetts cities and towns. One aspect that we focus on at the watershed is the impact that dams create along the river. The Charles River is 80 miles long and there are 20 dams along this 80 mile stretch. Because of this high density of dams, most sections of the Charles are impacted by one dam some way or another. The systems of dams have a major impact on the river and the watershed. Some of the dams create significant backwater environments. One of these dams is the Moody Street Dam in Waltham, Massachusetts. Behind the Moody Street Dam, the river widens, slows down, and creates an area that we call the Lakes District. The Lakes District is an area where the Charles is much wider than other areas. Um, there are small coves and inlets. This area generally stretches from the Moody Street Dam upstream to Commonwealth Ave in Newton. This area is bordered by the towns of Waltham, Newton, and a small piece of Weston. In the Lakes District, we have a major issue with invasive water chestnuts, and we're starting have, to have emerging issues with other nuisance vegetation. As I mentioned, this area is slow moving, wide, shallow water area. We also have in the Lakes District, as we do in all areas of the Charles, a major issue with phosphorus pollution. Phosphorus, which is typically the limiting nutrient in a freshwater system, meaning that once it runs out, you wouldn't get any more plant growth, is extremely abundant in the Charles. We have about twice as much phosphorus entering our river than would be found otherwise in a natural unimpacted system. This phosphorus gets into the river and essentially fertilizes the river. So it allows these plants, such as invasive water chestnut, to grow prolifically, unchecked, more so than they would in a natural, unimpacted environment. In the Lakes District, the, air, the water is also shallow, heats up quickly, and promotes overgrowth of this kind of aquatic plant. The issues that these invasive plants cause can be varied. In the case of water chestnuts, they're allowed to grow because of the phosphorus. Additionally, because they're invasive, meaning non-native to this region, they don't have many native pre predators or native limiting factors. They grow in very dense mats on the surface of the water. One issue it causes for humans is they make it very difficult to canoe through this region. The Charles River Lakes, Lakes District has historically been used very heavily for recreation. It's a really nice place to take a paddle. It also has a lot of environmental and ecological impacts as well. The fact that they sit on the water, on the surface of the water, makes it difficult for sunlight to penetrate down into the water um, to provide sunlight to submerged aquatic vegetation. Additionally, it limits oxygen exchange across the surface of the water. When this large mass of mass of plants dies in the fall and winter months, it sinks down to the bottom and as it degrades, it uses up dissolved oxygen in the water column. This dissolved oxygen is what fish and other aquatic animals actually use to breathe. So it can actually cause fish in severe cases to potentially suffocate um, and form what is known as a dead zone. Invasive species um, can cause a variety of different issues in different environments um, and the water chestnut is not the only invasive threatening the Charles River. The issues that dams cause can also be numerous. Um, in addition to slowing down and heating up water impacting the natural flow of a river, 
They also impact the natural movement of aquatic life, such as fish and other animals. In the Charles, we have some species of what we call anadromous fish. Those are fish that live most of their lives in the ocean, but come into the river to spawn or lay their eggs. So these fish need to make the voyage from Boston Harbor up through the Charles into a nice secluded protective area where, they're let, where their eggs will be protected and able to grow. Um, in the Charles, since there are so many dams, this voyage can be difficult for fish. Additionally, the native species that live here often can't travel as far as they would naturally because they are bound by dams. Many of the dams in the Charles do have fish ladders or some type of fish passage, but depending on the type of species, not all fish ladders work very well. And of course, it's a much different way of travel than the fish would naturally expect in a natural environment. So there are ways to improve fish passage on existing jams, um, but of course dam removal is the ultimate goal for river restoration.